Have you ever felt like you are not progressing in your career because you are not the favorite one in the eyes of your boss? If that sounds familiar, you are in the right place. Today we are going to explore a topic that could be the game changer you need. It's about becoming the most proactive person in your organization. My name is Ezekiel and we are drawing inspiration from the timeless wisdom of Stephen Covey, the seven habit of highly effective people. Stick around as we break down the six actionable steps that will not only make you stand out, but also pave the way for that well-deserved promotion. Let's get started. All right, buckle up, because we're diving into the first step in your journey to become the most proactive force in your organization. Imagine you are at your desk, armed with nothing but a notepad and a mission to uncover the inefficiencies lurking in the shadows of your work life. Now, these inefficiencies could be the subtle roadblocks slowing down the onboarding process or the tangled web of confusion around maintaining documentation. But fear not, identifying these areas is the game-changing first move. Think about it like being a detective in your work environment. You are Sherlock with a notepad instead of a magnifying glass. Look for clues, anomalies, and places where things could be smoother. Are there repetitive tasks that could use a digital makeover? Is the communication during onboarding as clear as it could be? And here's the kicker. Studies show that workplaces with proactive employees are not only more efficient, but also happier. Recent research found that teams that actively seek out inefficiency not only boost productivity by 20%, but also report higher job satisfaction. Let me give you a recent example. In my team, we noticed a bottleneck in our project management system. Tasks were getting lost in the shuffle, impacting our deadlines. By simply jotting down these inefficiencies and proposing a more streamlined system, we not only improved project delivery, but also created a ripple effect of increasing team morale. So grab that notepad, embrace your inner detective, and let's start uncovering the inefficiencies that are holding you back. Because my friends, the first step to being proactive is knowing where to shine your light. We're diving into the second step of our journey, proposing solutions. So you have identified those inefficiencies. Now it's time to be the architect of change. Let's turn those identified problems into golden opportunities. So here's the game plan. Analyze and identify the simplest, most effective solutions to the inefficiencies you have uncovered. Think of it as crafting your proactive roadmap. You are not just pointing out problems, you are presenting clear, actionable solutions. Why is this step crucial? Well, studies in business innovation consistently show that organizations with proactive problem solvers not only overcome challenges, but also foster a culture of continuous improvement. A recent survey found that teams that actively propose solutions are not only more productive, but also experience higher job satisfaction. Now, let's talk about creating that presentation. It's not just about a slideshow. Is your proactive manifesto. Outline the problem in simple words and then dive into the proposed solution. Use visuals, charts, and any creative tool at your disposal to make your solution crystal clear. This is your chance to shine as the proactive hero your organization needs. In my journey, when we faced a bottleneck in our communications channels, I proposed a simple yet effective solution that streamlined our processes. The key was presenting not just the problem, but a well-thought-out plan for improvement. All right, proactive warriors, here's a crucial step in our journey to becoming the driving force in our organization, seeking feedback. Before you step into the spotlight and present your genius solution to the higher apps, there is a pit stop that you don't want to miss, presenting your ideas to a trusted colleague. Why, you ask? Well, think of it like a dress rehearsal before the big show. Your colleague is your backstage crew, offering you a sneak peek into how your proposal might be received on the grand stage. Their feedback is not just valuable, it's like gold dust in refining your solution. So, who should you choose as your feedback ally? Look for someone whose opinion you trust, someone who can give you constructive criticism without sugarcoating. This could be a seasoned colleague, a mentor, or that friend who always gives it to you straight. In my journey, seeking feedback became a game changer. 
I presented my proposal to a colleague and their insights helped me refine in ways I hadn't considered before. Plus, having that initial support boosted my confidence when it was time to face the big guns. Remember, seeking feedback is not a sign of weakness. It's a strategy move to ensure that your proposal is bulletproof. So find that feedback body, fine tune your solution, and get ready to shine when you hit the main stage. All right, proactive champions, here we are at the pivotal moment in your journey, presenting to the key figures. It's time to take center stage, and I'm here to guide you through turning that meeting into your shining moment. Picture this as your time to step into the spotlight. You have done that groundwork and refined that solution with feedback. And now it's time to schedule that all-important meeting with your boss and other key figures. Firstly, let's talk about mindset. This isn't just a presentation, it's a performance. Channel your inner TED Talk speaker. Radiate confidence and remember, you are not just presenting a solution, you are showcasing your proactive mindset and your ability to identify and address challenges head on. A recent survey revealed that employees who excel at presenting their ideas not only gain the support of key decision makers, but also foster a culture of innovation in their teams. So, how do you dazzle them? Start with a clear problem statement, smoothly transition into your well thought out plan, and wrap it up with the anticipated positive impact. Use visuals, infographics, and whatever tool you have at your disposal to make your presentation memorable. In my journey, this step was nerve-wracking, but exhilarating. I presented our team's solution for a smoother onboarding process to our leadership, and the positive response was overwhelming. It wasn't just about the solution, it was about showing that proactive spark that makes you an invaluable asset. Scale that meeting, step into the spotlight, and let your productive initiative shine. Now that you have had your moment in the spotlight, it's time to talk about the critical aspect of our journey, persistence. Proactivity is not a one-off sprint, it's a marathon, and the key to success lies in being persistent. So here's the deal. You have presented your ingenious solution, you receive some recognition for it, and maybe even a promotion. Fantastic! But the journey doesn't end there. The magic happens when you make proactivity a habit. Make it a ritual to revisit your notepad, uncover new inefficiencies, and brainstorm fresh solutions. Research in organizational psychology consistently highlights the power of persistency. A recent study found that teams with persistent, proactive members not only boost the overall team performance, but also contribute significantly to a positive work culture. Let me break it down with a personal touch. After my initial success with a streamlined onboarding process, I didn't stop there. Every month, I revisited my list, searched for new inefficiencies, and presented fresh ideas. It's like planting seeds of innovation regularly. Some may not sprout immediately, but the ones that do will transform your career garden. Consistency is the name of the game. By continuously presenting new ideas and solutions, you not only showcase your ongoing proactivity, but also demonstrate that you are not a one-hit wonder. You are the maestro conducting a continuous symphony of improvement. So, my proactive friends, stay persistent. Keep presenting those ideas, keep refining your solutions, and watch as your efforts become the driving force in your organization. Stay tuned for the final step where we will explore the art of overcoming rejection. Because persistence isn't just a trait, it's a superpower that turns proactive intentions into lasting impact. Keep that proactive flame burning. All right, proactive warriors, we have come to the last leg of our journey, overcoming rejection. It's a reality check that we all face, but here's the secret sauce. Don't let rejection dim your proactive light. Let it fuel your determination. So, you have pitched an idea and you heard that dreaded no. Maybe you heard it more than once. But here's the thing, rejection is not a roadblock, it's a detour. It's not the end of your journey, it's a redirection towards success. Let me share a personal anecdote. In my journey, I pitched a revolutionary idea and it got rejected. Twice! 
it stunk, no doubt, but instead of retreating, I used that rejection as feedback. I refined my proposal, I addressed the concerns and presented again. The third time was the charm, and the idea got green light. Each no is not a rejection of you, it's a refinement process. It's a chance to learn, adapt and become stronger. Remember, this process is about showcasing your initiative. It's about proving that you're not just a fair weather innovator, but someone who can weather the storms of rejections and emerge victorious. I applied these steps when I was a junior on a team transitioning from SBN to Git, taking the initiative to learn the necessary commands, creating a visual guide, and helping my colleagues demonstrated to my leaders that I had the drive and initiative needed for advancement. If you think it's difficult to have the first idea, let me help you. In this video, I share the five most common fears in the software development industry, where there is a lot of room for proactive problem solving. Thanks for watching, see you next week.